Hello, this is Mighty Owl. Whoa! Look at the way those waves move. Just that little rock creates a chain reaction on the surface of the water. What can we observe from these waves? Are they all the same height and length? What happens as the ripples spread out and they get farther apart until there are no more waves to be seen? Often when we think of waves, we think of water like this, or waves in the ocean. But did you know that waves occur in other places as well? In fact, waves are responsible for the sounds that we hear and even the light that we see. So let's catch a wave and investigate. When I think of the ocean, I think of waves crashing into the shore. But what about the waves out in the middle of the ocean? What shapes are they? Let's take a closer look. A wave is a moving ridge on the surface of water. But what exactly causes a wave? All excellent questions, my mighty friends. A wave is caused by energy passing through water. They're causing it to move in a circular motion. Most waves get their energy from the wind. The more energy, the bigger the wave. I wonder how we can measure a wave. To understand that, we need to learn a few key words. The crest is the highest point of the wave, and the trough is the lowest point of the wave. By measuring the distance between the crest and the trough, we can get a measurement of the height of the wave. And this is called amplitude. We measure the amplitude of a wave by looking at the distance that the wave dips down or rises above the flat, calm water. And we can also measure the distance between two crests or between two troughs to find out the wavelength. As ocean waves get closer to the shore, the water gets more shallow. And this causes the waves to slow down and get closer together. When this happens, the wavelength gets smaller and the height of the wave increases. Waves in the ocean can be a lot of fun, but we have much more to investigate on land. Oh, cool. This toy is called a slinky. And it's perfect for learning about the way that waves, especially sound waves, work. Now watch what happens when one person moves their side of the toy. <laughs> Whoa! Did you see the way the motion that started at the one end of the toy traveled through the whole thing? This demonstrates the way that sound waves move through the air. The person on the left initiates the wave when they move it. Just like the pebble being thrown in the water started the waves in the pond. Then the wave continues from that point and travels all the way to the other side. Sound waves are longitudinal waves, which means they move in the same direction as the disturbance that caused it. In this case, the person moving the end of the toy is causing the wave. But we can also use this toy to show a transverse wave, like a sound wave. A transverse wave moves perpendicular to the disturbance that caused it. Remember the pebble we threw into the pond? Those ripples are an example of a transverse wave. All this information is useful for understanding things like sound waves. So, turn on the music and let's make some mighty discoveries. This drum is making sound. But, how does a drumstick hitting the drum create what we hear? It's all about the waves. When the drum is struck, its surface vibrates. That sends waves of vibrations through the air, which then travel into our ears. Sound waves with low amplitude make softer sounds, while sound waves with a higher amplitude make louder sounds. So, leaves rustling in the wind would have a very low amplitude, but loud music would have a high amplitude. The length of the wave affects what we hear too. Higher pitched sounds have a shorter wavelength. And can you guess what the wavelength of low pitched sounds are? That's right, low-pitched sounds, like a truck horn, have longer wavelengths. As you can see, there's a lot more to waves than just surfing one in the ocean, though that is a pretty cool thing to do with a wave. 
There are two types of waves, transverse and longitudinal. We can even measure different parts of the wave, like the wavelength and amplitude. Understanding waves helps us to better understand the motion of water, as well as the way that sound travels. See you in the next video, Mighty Surfers!